And Genesis 4 immediately starts with the battle of the seed. Because when they were, had to leave the garden, the man was cursed, the woman was cursed, the earth was cursed, and the serpent was cursed. The serpent had to sail <laughs> and eat dust. So from Adam to Moses, death reigned. Satan and dust, that's what it is. And in Moses, the law was given. And then Jesus came, and you know what he did? He shook off the dust. <laughs> so Jesus took literally the curses. How can the earth be cursed? The earth is cursed with water and fire because they had to till the ground and get their bread from the ground. So the earth is cursed with water and fire, water and energy. John says, I baptize you with water, but he that comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is literally the baptism of fire. It cleanses you all the time. Now, you cannot read these stories separate. Otherwise, you have a children's Bible story book. And the Bible is not just a children's Bible story book. The history is there. But it's the living word revealing the purposes of God to mankind so that we can know who we are, where we come from, and where we're going. The problem today is that Christians all sort of know who they are. We are the righteousness of God and claiming to be more than that because only our spirits are made righteous, not our bodies and our souls yet. At the end of our faith is the salvation of our souls. So there are 18 kinds of righteousness. We just preach one. So we go around, we are, we are. But where are we going? <laughs> if you are someone, you must have vision and know where you're going. And this is what it brings when you know and understand these times. This is why this is so important. So the curse on the woman is you're going to bring forth. Now remember, in the garden, he said, you must rule and have dominion and multiply. Saying they missed the ruling, they missed the dominion. And now all that remains is multiplying. But what happened is the wrong seed entered into them. So when they're going to start multiplying, <laughs> what are they going to multiply? <laughs> the wrong seed. This is why the world is always governed with the fig tree. When Jesus came, oh, come on. It started with, they covered them with fig leaves. Jesus came and he said, I curse you. No one will ever eat of you again. Does it mean figs? No, man, I told you I ate figs in Jerusalem. It means the way that man is going to do it by himself is never going to try and work again. It's not going to work because man have not chosen God. In Christ, God has chosen us and he has given us his son. So right in the beginning of Genesis 4, we, we meet the first principle right head on, which is the principle of two sons. God had two sons, Adam and Christ. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The second man <laughs> became the last Adam, the last Adam, the last Adam. Don't let anybody tell you you can be an Adam or a Christ. Christ has done away with Adam. He brought a new situation. So the last Adam became a quickening spirit. How be it? The first is not spiritual but natural. And now you must be born again. So we need to understand these principles. There's always two sons. Come on, Abraham was the father of faith. He had two sons. But when God said to him, take your son, your only son, how could he have said your only son? There was Ishmael. God didn't reckon Ishmael because the principle was laid down here in the beginning. And we need to understand this. Isaac had two sons. <laughs> the elders sold his birthright, the first one. He just gave everything over for a, a pot of lentil soup. Although I went to eat lentil soup just to taste what it is that can make you sell your birthright. That is ridiculous. And then he was also robbed of his blessing because of he sold his birthright. Everything we do in life has consequences. And if you can just understand that in Christ, you know, the blood of Christ is like a net that covers us. And um, 
the Holy Spirit in us burns the work. You can mess up. It burns it. But all your work will be burnt. Nothing will be lost. But you will be saved because there's a net. But God wants the earth to be rid of the curse. And this is why we need to understand that the earth was cursed with water and fire. When Christ came, he said, the water will not overwhelm you. If you go through the fire, it will not scourge you. Well, it doesn't say you're not going to go through the water and you're not going to go through the fire. You are in the fallen creation and you go through things. But on your inside is the guarantee that you are going to make it. And you know what he did it? He sealed it so you can't go down in the water. You'll always be on top. <laughs> he sealed it so that the fire cannot get inside. Oh, my word. But it's not your doing. The victory system had to stop. Now, God had two sons. The first Adam, he didn't rule. And then he had a kingdom of priests. And then Jesus who was the sole expression of the glory of God came. And you know what he did? He loved us, he washed us, and he made us kings and priests to rule and reign on this earth. Now, <laughs> in the kingdom, we have not seen that because every time God blesses someone, they start worshiping money instead of God. It's all over. So we're going to step into a time now where it's going to change. And when God finds the person that's not going to serve money, the wealth of the wicked is going to stream into the city. Oh, wait. Now, the first thing that happened in Genesis 4, they got a little boy. And Eve said, God has given me a man. I've gotten a man by the help of God. But who's seen? was in him, Adam's seed. So <laughs> that's not good seed. It's seed of lying and deception. But now it went to another step. Now you've got to realize what happens here. God came down and he himself spoke to Cain. So God is still in the place. He's still the ruling authority of governing by the spirit because in the beginning, the spirit hovered over the water. Before the flood, he said, my spirit is not going to ever strive with man. So the flood came and that world was dissolved in order to bring a world where God's spirit is going to speak from the inside of man, not from the outside. And the second world, the world of the law, was the preparation for that body to get the spirit speaking on the earth. And this is all in the line of the battle of the seed. So here comes Cain and he was... Tiller of the ground. Think of it. A tiller of the ground. The earth was cursed and he had to till the ground to get bread. And the earth was cursed. It was not a good thing. Then they got another little boy and his name was Abel. And he was a shepherd with sheep. Now I love, I absolutely love this verse because he says, Verse 3, in the process of time. Uh, this is a small sentence, but it has a huge impact. In the process of time, these two sons brought an offering. And God says he, he did not have respect for Cain's offering, but he had respect for Abel's offering. What, uh, I've heard so many nonsense stories about that. Why? Because he brought an offering from a cursed situation where Abel stepped into the line of a real offering. Now you can say, but Annalise, there are wave offerings and grain offerings and yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to redemption, <laughs> you can't bring a grain offering. In other words, you can't buy your salvation. How easy is that? You cannot... You cannot do it in the wrong way. There's only one offering that's going to count for it. And this is why it's a principle. But if you don't understand it in the spirit, in the rest and connection with the Bible, you'll never understand offerings. But he says, in the process of time, these two boys brought an offering. <laughs> Revelation 14, he says, and time shall be no more. Or, or what time is he speaking about? Now, I read that 
so many times myself, I said, okay, that must be the end of the world. No, 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 no. That's the time. It's the end of time of the battle of seed. It's the end of the time in the process of time. There was a battle for seed. And what they did here is they brought offerings and Jesus Christ brought the final offering once and for all. That is why Hebrews 9.26 says, Now at the end of the world, Christ once brought the final sacrifice, once and for all. No sacrifice will ever do again. God doesn't have respect for it <laughs> because he knew what he did. So that triggered this seed that was inside Cain. And it came out in jealousy and he wanted things that were someone else's. And God said to him, Cain, I mean, God came down and spoke to him and said, Cain, sin is lying at your door. <laughs> Eve was deceived. Adam was disobedient. Cain opened the door to sin. It didn't just lead to death. It led to you are being the responsible of the death for others. So this is what Jesus Christ came to do. When he redeems us, we are responsible to give this life to other people. He says, you must be ready anytime to give account of the hope that you carry inside of you. We must bring the message of reconciliation. We must not be there dividing anything dividing and destroying the church carries the wrong seed yeah but you don't know what's this church the church is not the building listen we've got to come together in a building we know the church is not a building but where where do you have your services the church is everywhere but we we want to bring divisions by trying to be right <laughs> You know what? That's terrible when your right is wrong. <laughs> we must divide the word, not the body. And this has been going on too long. And um, I think the time is coming where these things are set right, but that'll be for a later time. Yeah, Cain's offer did not bring the respect to God. He opened the door to sin. He killed his brother. And you know what happens? Now, the earth is not just cursed. The earth cries for blood. Let's look at the curses on the earth. Water, fire, and now blood. Now, Jesus, <laughs> God himself, d took the first curse in the flood. Jesus came and his blood cried for better things than Abel. The only thing that must still be restored is the earth. But when Jesus poured his blood out, he put his spirit in us and he put the responsibility back in our hands to rule and reign right here on this earth. He opened the garden for us. He opened the tree for us. And this is why we need to be kings and priests in the kingdom on earth. And unless that thing is fulfilled, it's not going to be the end of everything. Corona is not the end of everything. Rest is. It is determined from the beginning. 